Good morning, uh, everybody. Good morning. Uh, it's good to have all of us back again. Um, uh, am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Anybody? Uh, once again. Yes, ma'am. You are. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I can hear you all too. All right. So good morning, uh, everyone, and uh, it's good to be here. Good to see all of you. Um, well and early in class. Uh, all a warm welcome to the e-learning students as well. As we um, move into week 13 of our course, we're almost uh, uh, trudging to the end. We just have another couple of weeks to finish the course. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, so, so we've been, we've been uh, looking at uh, a lot of, you know, uh, things that help us with our emotional wholeness. And uh, we had started on with a new chapter last week uh, on to how do we stay emotionally whole? And uh, to back up a bit, we had spoken about how we can, we can uh, deal with the conquests that, uh, with, the, with the issues that happen in our mind and how we, we see that the mind is a battlefield and how we can conquer that through, through the word, through the spirit. And uh, from last week, we started a fresh uh, uh, topic on how do we crucify the flesh um, and one of the ways of, of uh, staying into emotional wholeness, we looked at how we can uh, crucify the flesh. So we did explain last week as to what we meant by flesh. We also looked at certain scriptures that talks about how our fleshly um, desires and our fleshly lusts um, leads us to uh, leads uh, uh, leads uh, an issue with uh, with our souls. It damages our souls. It harms our souls. We looked at what are some of the fruits of the flesh. We had a specific list that we bought out that we bought about from the verse that was given, as well as from uh, from scripture in itself. We looked at how um, when there are wrong seeds. Uh, and roots that are so wrong seeds that are sown into our lives, um, then that takes a root and we bear the similar fruit, uh, you know, fleshly passions and fleshly desires. Um, we also looked at uh, how it is important thus to be able to lay the axe to these roots, to these selfish desires. We looked uh, initially at uh, two um, uh, specific selfish desires or selfish passions of uh, the the self and uh, jealousy and today we're going to be looking at the next two as well as how we're going to get rid of these f uh, fruits or these work of the flesh and and what do we do to to keep ourselves emotionally whole by crucifying the flesh so first of all we identified what are these fleshly lusts we're looking a little bit more into detail with specific four things that generally we all may be dealing with and how do we um, walk in freedom uh, in getting rid of these works or these fruit of the flesh is what we will be covering today. Okay, um, so we're going to move in. Uh, I, I spared the uh, misery of asking all of you, what is it that we've done? I've done that for you. So please remain awake, stay awake, um, keep engaged, um, with questions, uh, relate things that we are we are going to be speaking about. Okay, so the the two things that we spoke about uh, was uh, was self and jealousy, laying the axe to the root of those. Uh, today we're going to be specifically looking at laying the axe to the root to pride and to lust. Okay. Um, now this the 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 fact of pride is something that uh, um, you know it may not may not be manifested as easily but uh, just to bring about initially let's just look at what do we mean by pride what can what is it what what if we were to look at a definition of it what would we say pride is um, pride can be easily defined as someone who is uh, someone with the nature of uh, arrogance um, uh, high importance to oneself uh, the ability to continuously boast 
or to be able to exalt or glorify or uh, being in a place of uh, saying high things, big things about oneself. It is also a feeling that one is superior and uh, uh, higher up than than the others okay so the feeling of just being arrogant that you you know a lot of things that you can't be corrected uh, 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 an inappropriate way of looking at one's abilities or one's um, uh, skills or uh, who they are so just being just being in a place of giving a lot more importance than what is due and also boasting about that uh, that fact is what we can largely look at uh, pride. Um, now, it is very, when you look at the world system, it's something that's considered as probably normal for one to think of highly of themselves. And um, they are exalted if they are thought highly of themselves. In fact, you know, in different places, you will, especially, um, you know, when I, I remember working in the corporate of, of, of field for some time, and this was something that I used to be, you know, people used to keep telling me, you've got to make yourself visible. You know, your visibility should be high. And even if you don't do things, <clears throat> uh, you know, if, if you're able to blow it up out of proportion and, uh, you know, flower it up and give it a lot of names, that itself is good. I remember also one of my professors telling me, mm, you know, to, to take on, uh, a PhD, she said, uh, you know, at least take it for the sake of it, for the name of it. And uh, you will find that because you have the name attached to it, uh, you will find a lot of jobs, a lot of opportunities. But so, like I said, so the world system keeps it very, very normal. Uh, but if we are not careful, we can quickly get entrenched into this, the same pattern uh, of thought, of thinking and, and how we may perceive uh, perceive this. The scripture talks about this and what is in the world. And we see that in 1 John 2.16. It talks about three things that are in the world. It's the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. It says that is not of the Father, but it is of the, of the world. So these are things that you will find uh, in the world. Um, and it, it is in every part of our, uh, of the system that, that we are in. So what does pride do? It makes us feel that we are able to accomplish everything on our own abilities, uh, on our own, uh, on our own skill or dependence or things that we have. So if we aren't um, careful enough, it 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 gets into our beliefs and it gets into our understanding. And um, the, the fact is that, you know, when you look at the other two that scripture talks about, that is the pride, uh, the lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh, um, you, you can be very cautious about, about these things, you know, like lust of the, lust of the flesh, for example, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, wrong motives in relationships, you know, maybe ad adultery or even the lust of the eyes when you're looking at things uh, that, that, you know, that are, that are wrong. These, these are, you can, you can be sometimes very cautious about it, but pride can be a very, very subtle uh, attitude that can that can move into our lives and uh, make us look acceptable. Okay, but Scripture does talk about how the Lord hates uh, or pride is an abomination to God and something that um, um, that God does not uh, like and God does not uh, does not want in His children. Why? Because pride is something that keeps us away from from our relationship with God. And that in itself is a difficult place to be because, um, uh, you know, God, he says it's an abomination. So it's not some place that we can even come close to. Um, so even the things that we do, even as believers, it can also uh, uh, come as a result. If, if uh, whatever we do, sorry, whatever things we do, worship, prayer, reading scripture, um, you know, uh, just just being in a place of uh, uh, giving to God becomes so so much more um, emptied if there is pride in our hearts. So 
all of this needs to be done with a desire to um, to to build our relationship with God, but uh, and and not because and not as a motive of pride. Because if there is pride, it says you know God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. We see that in James four um, that He gives grace to the humble. And so the the antidote to the pride to pride or to jealousy or anything that that is more self seeking is the fact of being humble in order to receive that grace from God. So uh, we come to a place where we recognize uh, pride, and this this pride has different manifestations, and that's what we want to look look at as to what are some of the manifestations of pride. Um, so, so we need to examine this. Like we said, you know, it can be extremely subtle, and uh, uh, to really know these symptoms uh, of pride is uh, takes us to be open and to be clear about what is going on inside of us. So, the first one is uh, having a stubborn nature. So, when we're looking at stubbornness, we are we are looking at um, uh, how uh, someone being stubborn is uh, is having it their own way or wanting things their own way. Um, uh, so when we look at stubbornness, let's look at different kinds of stubbornness. There is also a good sense of stubbornness that is being stubborn about something, about the things of God, you know, about doing the right things for God. Like, for example, um, you know, if, if we're standing on God's word for something, you know, you continue standing on it knowing that God's word has promised what it says. Or uh, let's say, uh, you know, especially for us here in India, you know, when, when you go into a government office in order to get something, uh, in order to get something, there is often a bribe that is that needs to be given to get some work of yours done. But being stubborn, about staying in uh, in righteousness, okay, not compromising uh, in it is a good sense of stubborn. So you need to be stubborn about some things and unwavering about about things that belong to God or things that that you've been called to the purposes of God. However, what we need to do is also being uh, aware that there can be stubbornness um, that that is birthed out of pride. You know, like for example. Um, maybe when you know you're in the wrong uh, about something that that you it requires your repentance or it requires you to be to going to somebody and to be apologizing because you've hurt someone uh, and and when you're stubborn in that it comes from it it's birthed out from a place of of pride okay so stubbornness is 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 that which we we need to be aware of and and in different things of life. So it is good to be stubborn about the right things, uh, though um, often we end up being stubborn about the wrong wrong things. And we see that the root of that is generally pride, like we refuse to be corrected, um, refuse to take correction, uh, correction, refuse rebuke, or refuse um, even uh, some form of healthy criticism. Uh, the consequence of this is that it that there can be destruction. So that's one of stubbornness. The second is being arrogant. Now, a manifestation of pride is arrogance or the fact that one is too overconfident. Okay, um, so in, in this, you can look at it in very many examples. Like, uh, you know, I, I often take this example about, um, um, you know, uh, those who have some kind of especially when you're writing an exam, okay? The sense that you can do it even without studying or you can, uh, you can, you can ace it without even enough of a hard work or, or some kind of an effort that needs to be put in, you know, that's, that's what would be stubbornness. And that again comes from a place of pride. So uh, what does arrogance do? it puts us in a space where we think that we know everything, that we do not need anything from anybody, either the help from someone or the counsel from somebody, or we don't have to go through some kind of a regime or some kind of a structure uh, or something that's necessary for us to do to, uh, to keep, up, keep us in a place of 
effect if efficacy so th this this again is something that comes out of pride and it teaches what what bible and what the scripture says is that um uh, that the only way that we can renounce this pride or this arrogance or anything that is evil connected to that is the fear of the Lord. And that's that's what we read in Proverbs 8, 13. It says the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, arrogance and the evil way and the perverse mouth I hate. So the only way is to truly fear and revere God in the things that uh, we do. Now, even even among us uh, as Christians, um, you know that there, there are there are teachings of how we need to be spiritually aggressive. Now, spiritual um, a, 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 being forceful about you know the spirit about things of God is good, but we shouldn't confuse the spiritual arrogance with a spiritual aggressiveness. So when we are trying, when the, in our ways of being spiritually aggressive, sometimes we could also become arrogant in the sense of we feel or we think that we are doing the best or we are the best that we may you know and 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 maybe as part of our ministry we may see this is the best thing that we have in our church or there are so many things that happen in our church and look down upon others or other ministries or other people who may be um, in similar places of growth so it, the the arrogance is what makes us think that we are better off or that we have everything that is right so to being careful about that it uh, it shouldn't it shouldn't even make us think that we have the highest and the absolute way and we need to keep ourselves away away from that so that's where we not, we need to continue to stand on the truth of god's word so that you know it doesn't move into a place of being arrogant about about things of of god okay so that's uh, uh, um, arrogance the next is a rebellion rebellion again is a manifestation of pride now what is rebellion it's the uh, unwillingness to stand in submission to anyone who has been who's put in authority over us or someone who's been put in authority uh, by, by God himself or by by the word or by God's people like authority of maybe of the parents of leaders um, of uh, of uh, the government of uh, of pastors of, of uh, spiritual leaders so uh, like for the example that we look as within the family Parents are the God-appointed authority in the lives of, of children, uh, irrespective of, you know, how they may be. It is what uh, something God has instituted. So we are to walk in submission towards God's appointed authority. And uh, when we're looking at uh, uh, rebellion, we're also talking about obedience. Okay, P Obedience uh, is where you are willing to submit to that authority. And we say that even partial obedience is also considered as rebellion. So there may be times that we find we are okay to uh, um, bend or to, to obey something partially, especially, you know, I keep telling my kids this, you know, delayed uh, obedience is also disobedience. You know, you tell, your child something and then you may have to tell him 10 times and then after the 12th time uh, you know it's just, so so you you remind them that even delayed obedience is disobedience uh, so to to come to understand that um, obeying needs to happen in full and uh, we, we remember the example of Saul <clears throat> where um, you know to to the uh, to the Amalekites, yeah, I think it was the Amalekites that uh, God had said to destroy um, all of the Am Amalekites, to destroy everything. But what does Saul do? He keeps aside the 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 good of the land as well as the uh, some some of the animals and the livestock he keeps as well as the uh, king he keeps alive. And um, uh, Samuel brings about a rebuke to him and says how God is displeased. And he has rejected him from become from being king, which shows an active rebellion. So again, th that's what we see here of rebellion of being able to uh, to obey all instructions, all all things that God has put for us, or the people that God has instituted for us. Okay. So 
having said that, uh, you know, especially when we're looking at, um, at uh, uh, you know, when we're looking at children and parents, that the Bible also say that we must obey parents in the Lord. So in situations where we do see that we are asked to do things that are contrary to the word of God, we need to stand up for that. So even if it is in whatever kinds of authority, you're asked to do things that is contrary to God's word, that's something that we need to also stand up to. The, uh, to, to know that yes, God has appointed these authorities over us and as we submit to them, we will receive a blessing uh, on our lives when we continue to submit to them in the Lord. Okay, the next is, the next manifestation is being scornful. Mm. The, uh, what, what does it mean to be scornful is to disrespect or is to show contempt to somebody else, is to mock, is to um, maybe being, being actively, aggressively being sarcastic. And these, we see that this is, uh, how, how does this manifest in maybe the comments one makes or the opinions that people have about, uh, the, you know, the the scornful have about others uh, they often they don't have anything that is edifying or that is good to say and they always belittle or uh, or are derogatory in the way that they share or or say things um, and this again we see being scornful comes from from uh, a place where one sees oneself as important or, or higher than than others uh, the Bible speaks about this in Proverbs 1, says, for scorners delight in their scorning. So, and it also says, surely he scorns the scornful, but gives grace again to the humble. So it is again a warning that uh, scripture gives towards those who are uh, scornful, that it is something that causes trouble and causes, uh, causes a wrath to, to take place. Another uh, manifestation of, um, of pride is hypocrisy. And uh, hypocrisy is what we see is when uh, you, uh, it, it produces a sense of self-righteousness, which is what leads to hypocrisy. The, the fact that one becomes self-righteous puts them in a place where they judge others and they are made to think that they are better than others without actually looking at the flaw uh, in their own lives. Um, so a, hip a hypocrite is one who keeps away his own sin while condemning the sins of the others. It's it's like what it said in scriptures. You know, you um, you you look at the log uh, um, in in uh, you look at the speck in somebody else's eye, but forget the log that's in your own. So getting rid of this uh, this thing of being hypocrite hypocritical is the is also uh, I'm sorry hypo being hypocritical is also a way of of judging others and discerning that people's sin is greater than than your own. So you may find that you know a lot of times people do specialize in this you know just finding fault in others while while they don't recognize whatever has been going on to them, going on with them and we uh, you know it's often seen in a even in a counseling room where there are couples sitting together and actually blaming one another about what the other has done when they are pretty unwilling to look at whatever is going on within themselves okay so being hypocritical also comes from a place of not being willing to lay aside the fault of the other and look a little bit more closely into them into themselves uh, the next one is being qu quarrelsome being quarrelsome is continuously uh, being contentious causing strife uh, continuously you know producing being in a place of of um, of creating strife and that generally can come through different ways by slandering others by gossiping others or by um, by instigating others towards uh, towards a quarrel. Now, all of that comes from a place of, of an evil nature, or comes from a place of um, uh, uh, an evil way or envy that comes in. Okay, so that's that's the next one. The manifestation that we see is being quarrelsome. Uh, the other, the next one we look at is being high-minded or being exclusive. So uh, it of, often that comes is to that comes when one relies on their own 
qualities on their abilities and and the sense of being important that even um there could be capabilities or personal qualifications that make them feel that they have a a, a specific command or a or a um, or a class that is that is just theirs but scripture tells us to set our minds on things above and uh, to be to learn to learn to associate with people of all kinds so being connecting being able to connect with everyone um and not just feeling wise because of some things that that rule our lives so that's the uh, the manifestation of pride is being high minded just feeling as if one is exclusive to the rest of the world outside um what happens when one is steeped in pride is it results in definite fall and destruction you know proverbs says that pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall so that is something that uh, uh, that is seen that whenever there is pride um it, whenever whenever it is within us it defies it defiles the man and it can lead to destruction and it can lead to to great fall um pride also brings about a deceptive a deceptive spirit you know the 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 heart of a pride person is very deceived and they uh, and uh, they continue to 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 be ruled in that place of uh, wickedness or that place of um uh um uh, wrong doing or those those passions okay so they and and as a result of which they they even do things that uh, um uh, that that may be contrary so someone who ha who whose built in deception may have a lot of knowledge even about the word but uh, being deceived means not really helping the word to transform their life so they may know everything they may pray regularly they may read the scripture they may um, you know be all of that but not really having a difference in how that becomes an experience or becomes a reality in their life so just having that knowledge is not sufficient it it is something that needs to be experienced in that and that's what we would say um when you when there is self deception that takes place um pride also brings condemnation the concept we see as a result of pride is that it brings um the judgment and condemnation from god you know paul brings that up um uh, tells timothy uh, you know it says in first timothy 36 um uh, you know pride without with pride someone would fall and the same and they would have the same condemnation as as satan as devil so it brings the same judgment and condemnation um that that has come upon satan when when he rebelled and when he condemned and was sent out of the presence of god okay so um so th these are some of the things that we see does come about from uh, a heart of pride and to being careful of that okay um now before we move into the next uh, part of lust uh, i just want to take up any um any questions okay i think there's a question here can being too religious be treated as pride okay so um i think it, it does matter when you're saying can being too religious how does your religiosity since you've used that word or your spirituality manifest um scripture tells us that all things must be done in love so uh, whether it is uh, even in correction uh or or you know in everything that we do it should be coming from a place of love and coming from a place of meekness and uh, one one of the one of uh, i think in you know in last week's um, message also in james we we spoke about being meek you know even in scripture it says blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the kingdom of god in everything that we do we do out of a sense of dependency on god even even when it means um working with people in building their spirituality or building their things of god that we don't look down on people because they may not be at the same pace that we are in however that does not keep us away from building our own uh um our our own selves 
in God. You know, building that maturity is very important. However, when you relate to others, being kind, being gracious in um, in helping someone uh, grow in their spirituality. Yes, you encourage, you challenge, but not in a place that uh, it it comes off as as something that is offhandish or something that's coming from a place of superiority. But uh, even, even the faith that we have, we hold it um, in absolute grace uh, as we deal with other people. Um, Kendi, I hope I answered that. Shay, I think you've raised your hand for a question. Yes, Pastor. Um, um, I have a question on lost. Uh, just a clarification, which my opinion was um, you can't lose after your spouse. Am I correct to say that? Um, so I, because I, I feel, oh, you're married already, so why should you lose after your, your own spouse? Is it possible for someone to lose after his own spouse? Uh, I don't know if that's correct to say. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I think that let's maybe let's look at the ex the the meaning of lust and then you know take that question from there. It is uh, it is an excessive, uh, uncontrollable desire, uh, a, a need to yearn and to crave and to long for something uh, that that also may not be yours. So I, I think if we were to look at the definition of it, would it would it be possible to lust after? After all, your spouse is your own, and uh, uh, you know the the relationship that shared is mutual. So lust is something that is uncontrollable, that is excessive, and it is that passion and longing to crave for something that isn't. Yours. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Not clarified. So, Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Is there any other question? Ma'am, can okay. we call it obsession? Sorry, come again. Can we call it obsession, not lust? If it is, it's your own, and you're, you know, feeling that kind of, a, you know, uncontrolled desire or something. Uh, is it obsession? So obsessions, okay, now, now the word obsession uh, is also, I mean, it has different meanings when you, when you look at it, uh, um, you know, in different ways. But obsession is something that rules your mind in such a way that, uh, yeah, I, and I think, yeah, when you look at it, so, so what is obsession? Something that continues to rule your mind to do something and up until the time it's done, uh, the obsession doesn't leave, okay? Uh, so it, it is something that that is irrational, it is uncontrollable, it is, um, uh, it causes, it causes deep sense of emotional, uh, what do you say, attachment to something. So yeah, and and I think yeah, in 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 a great way, obsessions also would be mean to lust, to want something or to do something that uh, that makes it a craving, a, a severe craving. So I think yes, obsession also, in in a in a way, can be lust. Now I think even as I'm talking about obsession, I still also want to bring about the other side of it is that um, obsession can also be. Uh, uh, some kind of an obsession can also be uh, a mental health issue, okay? And that is an irrationality and bringing about deep anxiety. Uh, and that, when, when you're looking at obsession, it's something that happens multiple periods of time and it's irrational. Uh, not some, And it takes so much of a hold on you that you're not able to function normally okay so there is that that's why i said there are many meanings to that word in itself so obsession can also tend to be uh, that that move into a mental health state as well so to be able to decipher that i think it's it's again like a case by case issue and and something that requires a lot more of 
uh, finding about what the background uh, and all all is okay um, so yeah so obsession in in a natural part of the way is uh, is something that that can be as a part of lust also okay yes, because uh, came across something like that in in a marriage where someone you know the the husband is uh, loves the wife but he is not able to share her like with her own family in in the presence of other people that person feels you know not able to share uh, his wife he feels insecure i don't know i'm not going to use any such words insecure or something but not mm -hmm. comfortable doing that mm -hmm. happy mm -hmm. with his wife everything fine loving his wife but mm -hmm. in in the crowds in with even with the family you know there is a change mm -hmm. of behavior and you know feeling like mm -hmm. uh, i i don't want to share you with anyone so uh, mm -hmm. is what would you call that kind of a behavior ma'am that's okay, what okay so okay so th so that again can the root of it can be very many one is it could just be uh, like you said just a sense of possessiveness okay high sense of insecurity um a lack of uh, um this personal self worth that everything seems to be attached to the person so again we need to look at the roots of this it can also be paranoia in a paranoid you know someone who's paranoid about about their spouse and that again uh, uh, also has a, has a small twist towards um, a mental health condition as well is that paranoia that's there they they're extremely suspicious doubtful about the whereabouts of their spouse and and things like that so where does these things come from so these are uh, again you know the the selfish desires that may come about uh, we, what we are also looking at is what is the motive of it what is the motive behind it what is the intent behind it so to to really answer that question i think to to have a wiser understanding of what is the background of it uh, you know it's is it is it just something like a selfish passion or is it something that's more deep rooted in in uh like like being extremely possessive about something which comes as a result of of a poor self worth in itself or uh, being paranoid about it or being suspicious highly suspicious highly doubtful uh despite evidences against it not trusting the, is that coming up from a from a uh, from an illness perspective is something that is important also for us to kind of tease out and understand thank you ma'am okay yeah. Yeah, yeah okay yeah. all right okay so we're going to be looking at lust now um of how do we lay the uh, lay the axe to the root of lust um now to to again what to bring about that definition is it's some it, it's to have an affection or a need to possess something uh, that that may not that that is fittingly not yours okay and uh, we see that lust is something that is the way of the world it is to fulfill whatever your desires of your flesh and your mind comes up if it is something that you need just go ahead and go take it okay if it looks good then you just go ahead and go conquer it um and this is something that is that is commonly seen in in the world system and as as unbelievers when we were also part of an unbelieving uh, you know season we also walked in this to really desire things of the flesh and the mind and if it is okay like you know and and there are different ways that people explain it that if it doesn't cause anybody harm if it doesn't uh, and and i'm and usually you have this question you know especially people um who who are under masturbation or pornography it doesn't do anybody else any harm so what what's wrong but then it is it is the motives of the heart the lusting after or over something that you would want to possess uh, which comes in as a wrong motivation is something that we see uh, as sinful also we see that um because of lust we have seen that there is the the very fiber of um you know the the moral fiber of a community of a of 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 a society also seems to be broken down because of lusting you know people do get into 
um, extramarital affairs, premarital relationships, uh, uh, different kinds of sexual experiences, um, sexual addictions, uh, sexual idolatry, all of this is something that 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 brings about because of lust. Um, so as we're looking at this, we, we also see that desires is not wrong. Okay. In fact, we we you know God wants us to wants to fulfill our good and healthy desires. Uh, you know, if we if we don't have a desire, that means we are we are like zombies. The Bible talks about having desires that are in um, in line with 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 God. So when we desire more of God and we desire more of pleasing Him, even the desires that we have. On, a, on, a, on naturally, whether it comes to food, whether it comes to relationships, all 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 begins to be purified. It comes from a from a place of purity and righteousness. Okay, um, so as yeah, Scripture talks about in Psalms, it says, "Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart." So the the more that your relationship with God is right, all the desires that come from after that is something that uh, that 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 is birthed out of purity okay so uh, knowing that we need to have come into a place of having good desires now again coming back to this and we we, we did speak about this uh, i think two weeks ago about temptation that we see that uh, um, again we, we brought this verse up in james where we said temptation is um it comes it generates it's it's when uh, we are drawn by our own desires because of our selfish passions or because of our lusts. Uh, it's, it's not the desire of anybody else or, the, or Satan's desire, but our own desires that are at work in trying to draw us and bring us to a place of sin. And you know, it weakens us and then we are, are unable to resist it and we are enticed in that. So temptation occurs when a desire for something wrong is is being birthed inside of us, stirred up within us, and brings us down. It weakens us, and we are, and uh, weakens uh, us to to not keep away from it, to not refuse it. So we need to learn to bring these desires unto subjection uh, to God and bring them under control. Now let's look at some of the lusts of the flesh. So how how does this? Um, what, what are some of the ways that it gets played out? Uh, the lust of the flesh will include things like the desire for uh, for things that satisfy our flesh. So that could be food, that could be substances, anything that we we begin to consume. Okay, uh, and this would also mean in the area of our sexuality, uh, sexuality also. So uh, you know, I, I, and I think it's it, this is such a fine line. We sometimes forget. We, we look at people who lust after alcohol or substances or, or people, but even for food, okay, having that uncontrollable desire for food. So that, that again is something, you know, we, when it takes on the place of God, when anything that takes on the place of God, it becomes idolatry. So food in itself is something, you know, we've got to, be careful about. Um, let's look at what the manifestations of uh, of of this of lust can be. Is um, uh, like we spoke about, you know, these desires that become compulsive. Um, when when uh, what when is it that it becomes compulsive? Is that uh, when certain habits becomes more than what is desired or what is needed for us. Like, for example, uh, simple things like maybe shopping or um, entertainment or things that uh, uh, that pertain to maybe even sleep, you know, have, having too much of it when it when it becomes too much of of what is what is supposed to be uh, supposed to be had when 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 you when it is unnecessary, it becomes a compulsive habit. Like for example, maybe um, some kind of form of an entertainment. I, I think a good one is the phone. Uh, where does it become compulsive? Is the desire to keep looking at it even when there isn't a need to, or having it um, apart from from the actual. Um, 
functions of it maybe taking a call or doing your work on it or communicating to somebody but when when it goes into constant browsing constant checking of status constant checking of pictures constant looking into uh, you know entertainment that again becomes a very compulsive part of it and that traps us and holds us as slaves and um, you know it, it begins to be something that holds us in bondage and unless we admit that you, you know you're lusting there it, it probably you know to recognize that it, it you're lusting there we are not able to break or break out of it the next uh, manifestation that we see is like we said this perversion sexual perversion now we see that god designed sexuality as something good and he created it for um uh, uh, created it as pure and created it for something to be enjoyable within marriage it was something holy and there's uh, absolutely nothing uh, wrong with the way that it was designed and created by god but it was given for a specific uh for for a specific institution of marriage but when there are unnatural uh, sexual desires or pleasure that god did not design that becomes accept unacceptable before god and that begins to bound people in that lust of the flesh in the areas of their sexuality and we see that um, you know is uh, it, it's written uh, in scripture of the ungodliness and the unrighteous acts of men which 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 part of it and it talks of how uh, sexual idolatry those those who engage in it will not uh, inherit the kingdom of god unless there is there is a repentance in it and so also other forms of sexual perversion any kind of immorality premarital sex that which is outside of marriage adultery homosexuality incest bestiality i mean there are, there is a whole range of it all of this is unacceptable before god and this is uh, sexual perversion added into sexual perversion is also fantasizing about sexual experiences where you, where one may not be physically committing the act but um, is within within their own fantasizing about different things so that becomes the lust of the flesh and that is again that's uh, unacceptable so even using things to gain sexual pleasure even when there isn't a physical experience with the spouse is also sexual perversion or being in bondage to um, habitual masturbation is one more example of sexual perversion and these are things that may hold one um, in in this bondage because it, it continues to create strife and confusion within the mind the other we see is the lust lust of the eyes uh, one of course the common examples of is pornography and uh, as believers also many people do get entrapped into pornography um, because uh, th this material or almost is available everywhere you know either in a system or you walk out into um, onto the street on a billboard or reading up a newspaper um, you know everything all images that you that you look through look through indicates uh, something that entraps you into pornography okay and that's something again guarding ourselves and our hearts against this because all engaging in all of this brings about emotional um, uh, ill health emotional uh, brokenness uh, and emotional entrapment so so knowing that keeping away from all of this not just uh, keeps you away from from sin in itself but also these are all things these fleshly lusts damage the soul it brings about issues in the soul okay or even filthy thoughts or fantasies filthy thoughts and fantasies are again a part of the lust of the eyes and the flesh and uh, we are encouraged to think about things set your affection on things above on things that are pure on things that are true things that are noble th things that are clean that's what we we read in philippians 4 8 there is also the fascination that one may have about looking at um, people who are attractive um, and this is something you know often uh, uh, you know, it, it, this is something that probably uh, is something each one of us have at some point 
uh, thought of or done and feel that it's okay. But, uh, you know, we're not able to keep away from looking at those who, who are good looking. Now, it, it is okay to, to, um, uh, to appreciate beauty, but not in, a, not in a way that you become fascinated and keep looking for, uh, you know, for, for people who may be good looking or who may be, who may be a lot more attractive. Next is covetous, covet, being covetous. Uh, covetous desires are those that um, uh, is a desire where you where you want something that somebody else has, and uh, so whatever it may be that that they may have, um, it is important to 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 realize that there is that it, it is an idolatry when you're looking for something you have a desire about what something else that someone, someone else has. And we do see that that's one of the commandments that God gave uh, the Israelites as well, uh, because it, it's a form of idolatry that allows a desire for something else to take the place of God or takes the, the, the rightful place that God has. So an idol is anything that comes between God and us and, and where that relationship of God is, is tarnished. Um, so it could, be, it could be an object, it could be uh, uh, people, it could be an affection, it could be even, uh, and you would see that this this sense of covetousness is seen as spiritual adultery, where God's place is taken for any other idol that comes by. Sa similar in, in the area of lust is also the desire for money, for fame, for influence, for position. Uh, they also become certain places where our affection or desires uh, uh, go into and this be, again become different things that you lust after uh, you know this was the, the these were some of the the kind of influences that um, that the temptation that satan brought to eve right so he says you know doesn't the the tree look good the uh, good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes it's desirable you know and uh, and also you know you will become more more like god and it will make you wise so these are things that again we guard ourselves um from from having this desire for for these kind of things and uh, um a, a few more is you know being worldly or having greed the need for having more things um, to amass either wealth or or different different things that um, that that you would like to keep for yourself. Now, when we look at money uh, or you know having a house or things, it's not wrong in itself, but it is the love of it or the craving of it that becomes wrong. So God does desire to prosper us as His people, but a, but in our desire for those blessings, if we has if we have strayed away from the giver himself that's what again becomes uh, becomes like like lust uh, as well uh, there are there's also other other um, things like like youthful lust when we look at you know scripture talks about it flee from youthful lust but but flee flee youthful lust but pursue righteousness so when it comes to these lusts um, you know there are a huge there are probably very many lists. Uh, there can be, uh, you know, ungodly music. There can be ungodly entertainment. Um, there can be television, um, uh, you know, video games, uh, playstations, chat rooms. Uh, so many. Right now, there are there is a whole list of things that can that can come about. You know, even um, things about getting. Uh, uh, um, certain articles on towards the body, the skin, you know, tattoos and, and um, earrings and all of that, you know, all, all of this is, again, we're looking at the motive behind it as to what is it, what is it to, what does it bring about? Is it bringing about a lot more attention to oneself? Um, uh, the, the factor of desirability. Now, these are things that, again, uh, scripture is, is warning, warning us of. Well, what does, um, okay, I think we are way uh, above time. Okay, so let's let's break for uh, for ten minutes and come back. Um, we will resume at my in my clock. It's ten fifty four. We will resume in ten minutes. We'll be back at eleven fifty four. <laughs> 